You ever have a book just blow your expectations completely out of the water? That was this one for me. Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video we are going to be talking about His Majesty's Dragon, the first book in uh, Temeraire, and I have here this bind up that has the first three in it, uh, and this is by Naomi Novik. And uh, I have been, I've been hearing about this book for a long time, and people say that it's really good. The only Naomi Novik I've, I've read is Uprooted, which I thought was fine. Uh, a lot of people I feel like don't actually like that one. Uh, and like her new stuff is Dark Academia, which is very much not my thing. So uh, it's not an author that I, I've checked out a lot on, but I'd still plan to get to Temera, and I heard really good things about it. I know it's, uh, it's about a dragon. But I uh, this is one of those books where I apparently I had this preconceived notion, I don't know where I got it, uh, but that this was something entirely different. And I, I'd heard that it's you know, Napoleonic War and all that. But even before I heard that, for some reason I had it in my mind that this was going to be a book where uh, Temeraire the dragon was just like this little tiny talking dragon going along with a foot soldier in a war. And boy, was this anything but. So the the kind of basis of this world that we're in, because it's, it's almost like historical fiction or historical fantasy, I guess I would say, um, where it's we're in the time of the Napoleonic War, and uh, the, the difference is just that dragons are, are real. And I think it's a really great premise and it's executed really, really well because uh, we, as we learn more about the lore and everything too, it seems like basically it's just all of these different places that have mythos around dragons. We're just assuming it's all true. Like it's mentioned that, you know, the Chinese were the first to breed dragons and uh, so they, they had been doing it for thousands of years. And, you know, the, there are dragons that are different in Japan, in Europe, in South America, all over the place. It's, all these places have different kinds of dragons that, uh, you know, can look different, can do different things. And it all seems to be based on what the, the mythos is basically around the dragons. And I think that is super, super cool uh, and just a way to do it and uh, just institute it and make it feel like it's such a normal part of the world. And our, our main character we follow is uh, Captain Lawrence, and he is a, a captain for uh, Britain's Navy uh, when they, they capture a ship and find a dragon egg. And they are weeks away from shore uh, out in the middle of nowhere. And so uh, because once the, the egg hatches, basically, it's, it's whoever's like first there is who they, they may form a bond with. And uh, you have to get them to accept a harness, basically, or they will just never accept it. And so they know that they're going to have to do this. Uh, and they draw lots. And even though his isn't pulled, the dragon kind of latches onto him. And so he's kind of forced into uh, becoming uh, the, the, the bond of the dragon and has to join the... Uh, the corpse or the air corpse where they, they have dragons and, you know, fly dragons like an air force, basically, which is super cool already. Uh, but then he, he starts to discover very quickly that uh, it's, it's not such a, a bad thing after all. So that's kind of the basis here. And throughout, we get a, a ton of elements that I think work really, really well. And one of the big ones that I want to mention is the fact that Captain Lawrence is a grown man. He's not a young boy. This isn't a coming-of-age story uh, like you so often get with Dragon Rider fantasy, which is not a bad thing. Uh, it's pretty common. But this is such a flip on that kind of uh, trope where we have him coming in as he, he's, you know, he's a captain. He, he has his own ways. He's very set in his ways and, and discipline, how he sees the world, how he thinks other people should act. And we get all this fish-out-of-water kind of stuff when he goes to the corpse uh, and is seeing that they do things incredibly different. There's a lot of things he's not expecting, he doesn't understand. They're not necessarily fond of some random person coming in who's not been trained and isn't, you know, hasn't been part of the corpse because they start training extremely young. And so it's all of these elements that I feel like work so well with the fact that he's older and uh, color the, the story in a different light. So I, I love the way that that worked as well. And it's just really, like I said, it's the fish out of water stuff, which is something that I feel like has always worked well for me um, with, with that kind of trope. I enjoy it a lot, uh, where it's just somebody, you know, super in a, a situation that makes them uncomfortable or they don't understand. Uh, like I'm rewatching, for example, right now, Sleepy Hollow, that TV show uh, with Ichabod Crane wakes up hundreds of years in the future. And I always love all the moments of him just not understanding things or being angry about the way things are. Uh, so... 
Uh, this stuff kind of works for me. So you get a lot of that, and it it just shows you you get to see him broadening his horizons, uh, even though he is older. So you still get some of those elements, but it's done in such a different way and in such a different light because of the fact that he's a grown man. And uh, you know, Temeraire as a character as well, because the dragons do talk; they all talk. Uh, is such a great character. And so you still get so many adorable interactions, although Temur is very much not a small dragon, full-sized, very big dragon. Um, they do vary in size and everything, but uh, there's so many just, you know, heartwarming and adorable moments there. And it feels, uh, for a big chunk of this book, it feels kind of like what I feel like you'd call cozy because um, you, there, there's conflict, there are things going on, but there's just all of this bonding between Lawrence and Temur that's really, really great and just done so well but then you have uh looming on the edge of the fact that you know there's a war on and uh that's what they're training for they're training to join the war effort uh with the other dragons and so uh we as we get further in uh they start to, it's almost like you know they're not even thinking about that they're so busy with with what they have going on in the training and then like oh yeah we have this war on and uh we do get to see some really really interesting uh combat sequences as well which is once again totally different because it's involving dragon riders and it's involving these really large dragons and let me see uh oh if i can quickly find it i should have been prepared uh because i uh i was having a little bit of trouble visualizing at first um what was described because these dragons are very large and they have like whole crews that will attach onto the harness with carabiners um and that's super super cool and so this isn't it's not, uh, it's not a great picture but here's a kind of a picture uh that shows a dragon with like different people gonna go on and so like they will be riding into battle and uh like fighting and stuff with all of these different people there are uh you know men with with their uh, muskets that are on there and they're th you know they'll throw bombs and they'll fight other dragons and these sequences were so cool but it's also it's the dragons and the people they're flying like in formation and it's, it's this very militaristic uh just very different from what you'd expect with like oh yeah send in the dragons and they just go all willy-nilly no they're highly trained they have crews and so it's really treating uh the dragons almost like they are living planes which you know we didn't have at the time and so it it gives it such a different feel and it adds uh so many elements and once again it's just executed really really well that's kind of this book is like i think it's a really it's a good idea uh I, and the characters are really good and it's just everything was executed so so well i absolutely loved this i had a blast it's a, it's pretty short and i got through it very quickly uh and i just uh, i enjoyed i enjoyed every bit of it uh, I, I really, really liked uh, the, the conflict between the characters and how some of that was different, too, because of Lawrence being older. I, I, how that worked, the combat, the relationships, it's just everything worked really well here. I now understand why people enjoy uh, this book and this series so much. So I'm really excited to continue. But uh, yeah, I, I had a blast with this one. Uh, I'm, I'm glad I finally got to it. I, I'm, I'm kind of sad thing about it. I could have read this forever ago I, it's been on my list for years I've had a copy of it in one form or another for years but I'm glad that I finally did get to it so let me know in the comments uh what your thoughts on this one if you've read it um and just kind of like what your favorite parts were uh and if you agree or disagree with anything that I said here in this video as well I definitely will be continuing it'll probably be next year just because I have a lot of other stuff going on uh, but I'm, I'm really excited to continue with this one because uh, th this was just a blast. If you like dragons, if you like dragon rider stuff, if you like military uh, kind of fantasy, there's elements of all of that in here as well as, like I said, kind of cozy-ness uh, as well. So there's so much here to love. Really great. Definitely recommend checking it out if you haven't. Although I know a lot of people already have this one popular for a reason uh definitely worth it though uh and, and yeah i definitely recommend it so that's it for this one though like i said let me know your thoughts in the comments uh make sure to give the video a like if you enjoyed it check the link in the description as always for the wizardly enclave discord if you want to chat books whether this book other books really anything at all it's a lot of fun we'd love to have you and of course if you enjoy my content make sure to subscribe